Today, we get more tips from some amazing collectors, and we pick up a variant that we wanted for a very long time. So let's go. Welcome back to The Journey, and if you're new, we're collecting the entire Star Wars Kenner line, starting in 1977 and ending at 1985, and yep, we started from scratch, so if you want to go back and catch up on those episodes, please do. So even though I've been learning a lot on doing research on every figure that I get, let's face it, I'm still a Padawan. There is always more to learn. I mean, in anything you do in life. But a great thing to have in your corner are experts. And I'm really grateful on having been able to make some really great friends in the collecting space. And today, some of those collectors are gonna be dropping some knowledge on us. So let's get right into it. Our first tip comes from an amazing collector with a channel right here on YouTube, Collecting Star Wars. Let's hear from Steve-O. Hello, I'm Steve-O from Collecting Star Wars on YouTube. Joey asked me to come on to offer some tips for collectors. So I'm gonna call upon the three Ps. Come in, 3PO! 3PO! No, not 3PO, just three Ps. See, these are the three rules that have helped me build my collection and they've served me well. Here they are. The first rule is persistence. If you're gonna build your collection, you're gonna to have to invest some time online and in stores. So do it in a way that works best for your schedule. Maybe it's on your commute home two or three times a week. You stop in at a Walmart or your favorite local toy store. Maybe on the weekend or during your lunch breaks, you dedicate some time online to find the best deals. Whatever it is, be persistent, keep hunting, just as long as it doesn't interfere with your personal life relationships and responsibilities. Next is be patient. Here's what I mean by that. They've been making Darth Vader since 1977. The prices go up, they go down, but he keeps rocking. He's not going anywhere. So don't feel pressured to overpay for an item for your collection just because you think you may never find it again. Like I said, there's so much Star Wars out there. You can be patient and wait for the item that you want to come along at the best price. And finally, participate in a community. Whether you collect stamps or stormtroopers, baseball cards or battle droids, there's communities of collectors that exist to help one another out. So join up with one locally and online. Be a part of the rebellion against the scalpers. Now there's too many good ones to name right now, but I'll tell you this, if you found the Padawan collector, then you're already on the right track. The three Ps. I think those are great tips, and I'm actually gonna go write those on my bathroom mirror so I can see them every morning as I'm brushing my teeth. Patience, persistence, and participate in a community. Spoken like a true Jedi collector. And thanks to Steve-O for the tip. You can find his channel right here on YouTube. It's always a great time going on the hunts with him, and a link to his channel is down there in the description. Our next tip comes from a person whose work that you see every single episode. It's the creator of that case. It's none other than Drew Tegg from Collector Displays. Another little tip, I was talking to someone earlier on and they were asking questions about how you can hold a gun in a figure's hand where it's not quite strong enough. I didn't even realize I knew this, but I'd already done it. So my uh, cloud car pilot here, I don't know if you can see this. On his hand there what i've got is a plastic coated wire you normally use them for holding cables and stuff like that they are absolutely brilliant for holding guns in hands so you don't have to keep trying putting it in and out and losing paint and all sorts of stuff like that anyway there you go top tip i absolutely love tips like that because if you're like me i'm always waking up to find that the accessories on my figures have somehow dropped down on the floor or fell off onto one of the shelves. So I'm definitely gonna try that trick, especially because I live here in California. And you know, we have earthquakes here. A link to Collector Display's website is in the description and they create some of the most remarkable action figure displays on earth. Not just Star Wars, but some of the most popular collecting lines out there. So please check them out. Our next collector has one of those collections that I aspired to have one day. And it's because once he was a Padawan and learned every trick in the book to get there. Here to drop his knowledge on us is Eben the Collector. Hey, yo, this is Eben the Collector. So the top three tips for me, what I recommend for a brand new collector is, or any like a seasoned collector is, one, make sure you know what you're collecting. Uh, don't just buy any random crap because you're scared of missing out. You know, what do they call it, FOMO, fear of missing out? Don't do that. Uh, buy what you like, get what you like, and display it with pride. Two, uh, make sure you have a budget. Uh, a lot of people say don't, you know, don't worry about your budget. Dude, you have to worry about your budget. 
Stuff is expensive now. eBay, you go look for master replicas, it's in the thousands. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. Uh, take advantage of FlexPay, uh, payment plans, Afterpay. There's, there's all these companies that offer this stuff. Like if you were, really want to go for some of the high-end items, uh, save up or, or take advantage of some of these, uh, these, these payment plans. You know, those things will help you out. Three, make sure you have space in, in your man cave uh, or wherever you want to display it. I have a whole room full of collectibles and my wife's like, oh, where are you going to put this box? Where's this going? Uh, you got to make sure you, you, you have enough room in your, in your place so you can display this stuff. So that's my recommendations. Uh, hope you like it. And if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Three great tips from an amazing collector. And did you see his collection behind him? And that's not even half of it. To see his amazing collection, you can visit him on YouTube at Eben the Collector. A link for his channel is down there in the description. This next collector has a channel right here on YouTube and has one of the best vintage collections that I've ever seen. We are all geek strong. Take it away, Dino. So my collecting tip is, I absolutely love to toy hunt. I love the thrill of it. I also love to work out but we don't always have time to do both. So here is a toy hunt workout that you can try. Let's do this. Let's start with a jog through the parking lot. Be careful of traffic. Next we'll do walking lunges through the collectible section. How many people can say that they can curl a house? Single arm curls are always a great exercise. People love to hide things under the shelf. Might as well get a push up in. Then we'll finish the toy hunt with a victory knee raise. Hope you enjoyed that little toy hunt workout. Um, remember, the most important item in your collection is yourself. So be sure to take care of yourself and have fun hunting. 102, 103, <laughs> and thanks to Dino, we're not just getting in shape, but we're collecting toys while doing it. Dino has one of the funnest channels on YouTube. You can catch him at Geek Strong, and a link to his channel is down there in the description. We all know that guy. It's the guy who has every single figure and collectible that you've ever wanted. And it's this next collector coming up. He runs the Vintage Alliance on Facebook, and you'll find me scrolling there every day. Here is James Coleman. Hey guys, James Coleman here. Uh, I've got a real quick tip for anybody who's just getting into collecting. Find your focus. Determine what it is you want. Uh, try not to be all over the place. Uh, you'll find that you'll get better deals. Uh, you'll be happier. Um, for example, my focus is Return of the Jedi mock, clear bubble, unpunched, right? That helped me eliminate the things that I don't need uh, and really hyper focus on the things that I really do want. A great tip from a guy who knows what he's talking about. Find your focus and stick to that vision. And if you want to join a great collection community, head over to James's group, the Vintage Alliance. It's honestly not only the best group for collecting vintage Star Wars, but it's one of the funnest communities out there. And a link for the Vintage Alliance is in the description. And our next collector runs one of the biggest vintage Star Wars collecting communities on Facebook, and probably the biggest collecting community in North America. And it's the first Facebook group that I joined when I started my collecting journey. Repping the Imperial Commissary, here's Michael Havens. So I have a tip when you're in your buying vintage Star Wars toys, if you wanna make sure that something isn't uh, repainted, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to buy one of these. This is a UV flashlight, they're really, really cheap. And uh, what it does is it has a purple light and that purple light can show you if something's being repainted. As we can see on the helmet of this Death Squad Commander, uh, the repainted part is showing up with that bright light right above it. So uh, that's an easy way to tell and an easy way to save you money on buying your vintage Star Wars toys, especially in the wild where sometimes people touch stuff up. Have a great day. Thanks for the opportunity, Joey. I love when I get tips that are brand new to me and I've never heard of that tip before, especially when you're looking into invest in a grade because those graders, they're gonna look under the microscope and do just what Michael did. So it's better to know than be told later on after you've spent money. So thanks a lot for that tip, Michael. And you'll not only find the link to the Imperial Commissary down there in the description below, but if you're in the Nashville area, you have to visit IC Toys in Nashville. And that is ran by Michael's wife, Andrea. And a link to IC Toys website is in that description as well. And this next collector has a great YouTube following and a great following on Instagram as well. She collects all lines of toys and makes me jealous on a weekly basis on what she finds in the wild, both vintage 
and modern. Please welcome Nilda from Appetite for Collectibles. Now, as a huge Star Wars collector, I would like to tell people that usually trying to find the amazing finds can be found at a simple garage sale. Now, I advise you to check out all the local garage sales by your neighborhoods and see what you can find. I know a couple months ago, I was able to obtain Kenner's early bird special for a small amount of 20 bucks at a garage sale. Now, this caught my eye, I freaked out, and I was able to find the sealed figures still in excellent condition. From R2-D2 to Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, and the almighty himself, Chewbacca. Now this came with the little manual and it came with the stickers attached. Now, do not knock garage sales. Yeah, congratulations, Nilda. Once again, you've made me extremely jealous. And yeah, that's something that I have to do more of. I need to get my butt out there, go in the wild, look at garage sales, estate sales, and antique stores way more often than I do. Because like she says, you'll never know what you're gonna find. Especially that $20 deal that she got off of one of the most rare pieces of Star Wars vintage out there. You can find her at Appetite for Collectibles. Her link is down there in the description as well. And I highly recommend her channel. Our next collector leads the Monkey Lizard Army on YouTube. And if you don't know who he is yet, you're about to meet him. Here he is himself, the one and only Salacious Rum. I am Salacious Rum, leader of the Monkey Lizard Army. When you want to start collecting, it's important that you have an owner that is susceptible to such a hobby. However, if you do not have one, not to fear. We in the Monkey Lizard community have found that small trace amounts of chloroform can be used to knock your owner out when he is not looking. You can quickly run up from him from behind, put the chloroform over his mouth, and he'll be all like a cow. Whilst knocked out, you can take his credit card, or his mobile phone, or his laptop, and order any collectible items that you wish. It's that easy. Yay! Collecting's fun! You can catch Salacious Rum and his human assistant Bob on YouTube and it's one of my all-time favorite YouTube channels and the link to Salacious Rum is down there in the description. This, this next collector always makes me jealous by showing off his Voltron toys right in front of me. But he's also one of the friendliest guys on YouTube and he has an amazing collection both modern and vintage. Please welcome John from the Super Awesome Geek Show. Hey guys, it's John here. So one of my biggest tips for collecting, number one, be patient. You might see that Han and Leia figure and think, oh, I gotta grab it now. But always remember patience. And you're like, what? Sacrifice Han and Leia? If you honor your collection? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you will see them again and you'll probably see them at a better price. So yes, just have patience. Don't pull the trigger thinking it's the only thing and you're never gonna get it again. Patience is the key. And if you've ever seen John's YouTube channel, the dude knows what he's talking about. And you have to watch his movie documentary on the Transformers. It's one of the most amazing pieces of content that I've ever seen on YouTube. That's no joke. A link to the Super Awesome Geek Show here on YouTube is in the descriptions below, so please subscribe. And we have one more collection tip to hear before I go into a really deep dive on an action figure that I have always wanted for a very long time. And folks, we go into a really deep dive, so you're gonna wanna check that out. Our next two collectors are a husband and wife team who are masters of the He-Man collecting universe. You can find Rachel the Huntress on our YouTube channel as she takes us through her collecting journey through Eternia. And Matthew is an amazing comic book writer and you can find him at Ideas From Mars. Here they are. Hey guys, 
toy hunters here. I have a toy hunting tip for you, and that is to always be toy hunting. I'm always on the lookout for toys. So if you are going to the store for milk, you have to um, go out of town for work or anything, hit up the Walmart, hit up the Target that you don't normally go to. My son had a basketball game last week. It was an hour away. I swung into Walmart <laughs> before I went because those are the times that I am finding stuff. You know, when you least expect it, that's when you're gonna find toys. So happy hunting and good luck. Hey everyone, Matthew here. Toy hunting tip, toy collecting tip from me uh, would be like what you like. Um, don't get caught up in the hype of a certain line or a certain movie or a certain collection. Do what you want to do. Some of the stuff you collect might be worth a lot of money. Uh, some of it might be super cheap and not really worth anything. Um, enjoy it. It's your collection. So you might fall in love with uh, a certain toy line that not many people care too much about. But it holds a great place in your heart and fond memories and you love it. So, are they worth much? No. But whose collection is it? Yours or mine? So, that's my toy hunting hip. Collect what you love. I love it when you're in a relationship and your partner and you can team up and have that be a part of your life and your relationship. I think it's a cool way to live. And thank you guys for your tips. You can find The Huntress on our YouTube channel and that link is below in the description. And you can find a link to Matthew's Facebook page at Ideas From Mars in the description link as well. So please check them out. And thank you to all the collectors who sent in tips. I absolutely love reaching out and meeting new collectors, making new friends in this awesome community. And all of the collectors in this episode, I have the utmost respect for because they are all about positivity, creativity, and bringing us, the collectors, into a great community. And that is what I'm all about here on this show. So please go down to that description right below me and go check out all their links. Now comes the portion of the show where I get a figure and I pass on all the learnings that I found out about that figure. And this next one, I do a really deep dive on. Now, if you watched my last episode when I got the Orange Snake Yoda, there was a never ending variant class when it comes to Yoda. So this time, Let's dive into his counterpart, the brown snake Yoda. Now, the main difference in the Yoda that we're looking for is in the brown snake, but there are different shades to the snake to begin with, and you have to look at the factory variants. For me, it's very important that not only are the accessories correct and authentic, but that each and every figure comes paired with the correct accessories, especially if you're gonna send in those things to get graded. Each figure should come with the correct pair from its factory of origin. A great place to go is the Variant Villain. They have a fantastic website that breaks down not only the variants, but also the weapons and accessories that came with the figures from any given factory. Now the Yoda variants, in my opinion, are one of the hardest variants to understand. First, let's break down the copyright and country of origin stamps. And to really understand the Yoda variants, you have to start there. The Made in Hong Kong stamps will be similar on the Cater, Unitoy, and Smile Factories, but will have subtle differences in the alignment between the copyright stamp and the relation to the Hong Kong country of origin stamp. If you have a Lily Letty Yoda, there will only be a copyright stamp, and a Cater China Yoda will have a clear and visible LFL copyright stamp, but what seems like a bump underneath to denote the Made in China stamp. With a Yoda made from Top Toys having neither a copyright stamp nor a country of origin stamp. Then there's all the accessories. First, the cane. Most canes from Cater will have an EPM or ejection point marks on the handle. You can see the circle on the handle. That is the EPM. EPMs are marks where the accessories were released from the mold via a pin to push them out. That's what leaves the little circles on the accessory. Often, it's these figures that are hard to duplicate when making forgeries of these items. These cater canes will come in two shades, brown and red. The color difference is so minor, you really need to see the comparison with two canes of the different shades side by side. And the Unitoy molds have no EPM marks where the cater canes do. And it's also known that Cater started using Unitoy molds for their accessories at some point in the releases, so some carded Yodas have been known to come with both canes later on in the line. And features for the Lily Letty canes will be smoother and have a shinier finish. But all of these are hard to point out unless you have multiple examples in front of you. 
And now to the brown snake. The cater brown snakes have EPMs on the head of the snake and midway on the body, with the early version of the V1 snake tending to degrade to a green color, and some collectors call this the green snake variant, but yes, it's just a degrade issue. Cater later fixed the materials and the green degrades stopped. Unitoy snakes will have a more rigid texture to the mold and more defined features. And then there's the cloaks. The Cater cloaks have visible lines in the fabric more than any other factory productions and will have a fabric Hong Kong tag sewn into the cloak. Unitoy capes will have a paper Hong Kong tag sewn into the fabric. Some capes are darker than others, but have been argued to be an aging process or dirt process and can't be confirmed that they ever came on an MOC like this. And now for the belts. The main difference is that the Cater belt is thicker than a Unitoy belt and will have the EPM mark on the silver light. Again, the Cater mold will have a EPM mark on the silver light. And there are more variants of the Yoda, including the Meccano version and the Lily Letty versions, which include the Imperio, Retorno, Regresso, and the Transition Yoda. To understand all of these in more depth, visit the Variant Villain website to get deeper into those variants on the Brown Snake Yoda. So with all that knowledge in mind, let's go find a Yoda. Now the Brown Snake Yodas were quite expensive to find compared to the Orange Snake Yodas, and that was surprising to me. Some Yodas were going for as high as $190 for a loose complete figure, and they don't come around to the Facebook groups that often, at least the ones that are complete and in good shape. So we found one being sold on eBay for $175 Canadian dollars. All right, here's our package, and it comes from Ontario. Airmail, Fa Avion. Usually I get figures in boxes, and for an expensive piece like this, I was surprised that I did get it in this. Such a big price for a small thing. But here he is. Looks pretty good. The dark cane. The cane looks pretty good. The cape looks great, or his cloak. Let's get this stuff out of the way and we'll move the camera down. All right, so there's the two Yodas side by side. I mean, the differences are clear. Um, and I just noticed that one Yoda has a belt that's upside down, so we have to fix that. Won't do it right now. One Yoda is slightly smaller, but the darker Yoda has a slightly darker cape, but the eyes obviously different. But yeah, two good looking figures. They're both in great condition. You know, you can see their belts are in good condition. Their cloaks are in great condition. Reunited once again, the two Yodas. The darker green Yoda got dressed in a hurry, put his belt on inside out or upside down. It happened to the best of us. So let's cross this Yoda off our list that we bought from the eBay seller. And we got it for what I think is a high price of $162.42. And let's also place this Jedi Master in our case. And we're using our variant plank so we can showcase both these figures off. So thank you to all the collectors who sent in their tips. And I hope it helps you on your collecting journeys. And please visit my descriptions to check out all their links. And thanks for going on that deep dive with me on the Brown Snake Yoda. I think the Yodas are one of the most complicated figures to get right and to understand all the variants. I still have to go back and reference all those points because it's almost impossible to memorize. And I hope what I drop down offers you more insights as well and what to look out for. So if you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. It does support the channel. And also, if you need any accessories for your collecting journey, down there in the description are links to things that you might need. And when you click and buy from those links, it does support the channel, so thank you for that. And if you wanna subscribe, please do. Hit that subscribe button, and also hit that notification bell so you know when videos go live. I post every Wednesday and Saturday. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video, or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.